Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and whether you're doing some Black Friday or holiday shopping for yourself, or you're just accidentally gonna leave this link open on a loved one's computer who might be doing some gift buying on your behalf, I'm gonna go through some of my favorite accessories for the Kamado Joe. Let's get into it. Kamado Joe makes some amazing accessories for their line of grills. If you happen to be following along and say, James, I have a big green egg or I have a Primo, I've actually made a version of this video just for those grills since some of the accessories, they are not interchangeable between brands. So if you have one of those or you're shopping for someone with a Primo or a big green egg, be sure to check out the links down below. Today's video is all about accessories that are guaranteed to work in the Kamado Joe. Kamado Joe makes some amazing accessories and I'm not going to read through everything that's available on the website. That would be A, really boring, and uh, there's lots of great information on the website in terms of what fits each model. Instead, I'm going to handpick and curate some of my favorite accessories that are made by Kamado Joe, as well as some lesser known ones from the third-party ecosystem designed to enrich and enhance the experience of owning and using a Kamado Joe and give a little bit of the spotlight to some of these lesser known brands. So without further ado, let's get started with some of my favorite KJ accessories. I'll get started first with the Kamado Joe branded accessories as there are a few that have made every gift guide I've ever done as they're absolutely some of my all time favorite accessories. And so those of course would be the soapstone as well as the jotisserie. So a few reasons why I love each one. The jotisserie along with the optional but recommended jotisserie basket is a great way to add even more versatility to a Kamado which is already one of the most versatile grills. And the experience of cooking directly over the coals is amazing on things like rotisserie chickens, turkeys. If you want to do a uh, rotisserie wings, one of my all-time favorite ways to do wings is on the rotisserie basket as those wings toss and tumble in their own fat acting almost like a deep fryer and i say almost like a deep fryer i actually did a taste test earlier in the year four ways including deep fried versus air fryer versus grilled and hands down the rotisserie not only in my own perceptions but in a blind taste test that i did with sarah comes out on top every time. In addition to the jotisserie, another accessory that has stood the test of time is the soapstone. So this is antibacterial, it doesn't rust. I keep my gear outside as much as I love cast iron. Keeping the rust away can be a tricky task, particularly in a northern climate. All those issues go away with the soapstone and when I'm done I can just blast it with a high heat uh, cook and flip it in between my cooks and it comes out clean and good as new uh, each time. The only caveat that I'll add to the soapstone is it's a natural stone and it needs to be supported with either your X accessory rack or a cooking grid underneath of it to reduce any risk of it cracking. Uh, in the past, I normally haven't included the dojo, so I'll put the caveat here, is if you are cooking primarily just pizza, I've done a side by side and you don't cook pizza more than once or twice a year, this probably isn't worth it since a pizza stone inside of your Kamado can already turn out an amazing pizza and the incremental difference of the dojo versus the non-dojo pizza is in the neighborhood of you know under 5%. But if you already have one and you cook pizza regularly enough, there's a secret hack with the dojo in that's using it as a smoking accessory. In fact, I think I'm actually more excited about the difference that it makes on things like brisket, pulled pork, and ribs, as this makes my Kamado Joe into a mini offset where I get that arcing smoke pattern flowing from the back to the front, kind of like a miniature chamber in my offset smokers. And the results have been hands down. Some of the best food I've made on any Kamado style grill is using the dojo accessories. So if you find yourself I might make pizza more than once a year, and I would also be interested in using it in a smoking accessory. It could be a good addition to your gift list. A little bit more affordable on the accessory option is the raised grid extender, and this is a great way to add a lot more capacity. If you're looking at the Kamado Joe website, I would check out the new carbon steel cookware. So whether it's the half moon pans, the paella pan, the griddle accessory, and or the wok, Kamado Joe offers some of the most grill specific carbon steel accessories of any manufacturer. And if you're one of those people uh, that is approaching, I have nearly every accessory that there is uh, made by Kamado Joe or and or the third party. These could be a great addition to anyone's gift list. Smokeware might be best known for things like their drip pans and or their chimney tops that you see on my Big Joe Series 1 
or Joe Jr. But there's actually a few more accessories that I want to highlight from the Smokeware catalog. But before doing that, the benefits of the Smokeware chimney cap. If you have an older daisy wheel, one of the two uh, limiting factors of the traditional daisy wheel style uh, vent cap is one, if you're in an area where it's raining heavily, something I solved uh, living under the protection of the pergola. But I used to run into this issue all the time where heavy rainstorms could come in. And if you have a daisy wheel, the rain can find its way inside your food. That problem is solved on the new control tower top, but it's also uh, completely solved with something like the stainless steel smokeware vent cap. Another uh, challenge that the smokeware vent cap solves is the moving of your vent setting. So when you open your dome, the daisy wheel is prone to moving. And so if you didn't catch that, when you close your dome, your temperatures can move up or down from where you set them. And all of those issues uh, go away with something like the uh, smokeware cap. So not only do I think it is a nice looking addition in stainless steel, it's easy to clean. I can throw that in the dishwasher. And both of my caps are several years old. And while I could absolutely throw them in the dishwasher and bring them back good as new, I still think they look uh, pretty amazing. Two other uh, smokeware products I haven't shown uh, perhaps in a while, but I still have and absolutely love is the swivel grid accessory. I use this in my Joe Jr. So this gives me a second level cooking rack and it opens up a ton of versatility for those quick midweek cooks or you want even more capacity out of a small Kamado like your Joe Jr. And the other one is the side shelves. And so while I don't use side shelves in my outdoor kitchen, my Kettle Joe and Classic are the last two grills that I added smokeware's upgraded uh, wood shelves not only these offer more space, they offer a premium looking wood shelf, which I absolutely loved on my Komodo Joe, Kettle Joe, and Classic Joe when I had them installed. My next uh, group of favorite accessories is made by Kickash Basket. This happens to be their Half Moon drip pan. One of the reasons I love it that is unique versus the smokeware pans or any other pan for that matter is it has these perforated feet which keep it from sitting directly on the heat deflector. And for things like, uh, for example, rotisserie turkey, if you wanna catch some of those drippings and save them for making gravy, getting uh, some clearance away from your heat deflectors is a great way to make sure that we don't incinerate whatever drippings we do manage to collect and we can absolutely reserve those and make things like stock or gravy. Some other uh, kick-ash basket accessories, the common two that you see in all of my videos are things like the kick ash basket as well as the kick ash can. So there's a couple of things that the basket solves. So including on the Joe Jr., if I take this camping and I need to get some heat out of my grill, I can actually remove any of the active fire and let the grill cool off so I can get that back into my vehicle. But outside of uh, travel, even including on the two Big Joes which are stationary behind me, there are things like airflow. So this is the stock Big Joe uh, ash grate which has perforated holes, but this can and with depending on the type of charcoal that you're using or ash buildup can cause some temperature control issues. So the ash basket I find is much more breathable than any stock cast iron grate. But the real benefit comes when you combine the ash basket with the can as this makes clean up a breeze. Kamado Joe has done something unique right out of the box. So first, do I need to add the kick ash can? No, you already have something right out of the box, but I'm gonna give you a few reasons why you might want to consider it. As good of a job as those wings do at funneling ash down into the removable ash drawer, on long cooks, the ash drawer can become overwhelmed with the amount of ash and or over time, I reinstalled them in my Big Joe Series 1 and after six months of use, ash gets stuck behind those and since those are underneath the fire ring and the multi-piece fire box which can be a little bit precarious to reinstall and get the uh, ring back on top to hold everything together if you don't find yourself wanting to do that that often the kick ash can not only is easy to remove all of our ash in one step it is also uh, much larger in terms of the amount of ash that it can hold without becoming clogged. So if I show you on the stock Komodo Joe ashtray, if I fill that up with pellets for a demonstration, and then I dump that into the kick ash can, you can see how a completely clogged stock system is barely making a dent in the kick ash can. So I'm never gonna run into any airflow problems. I'm also able to remove 100% of the ash every single time without needing to fuss with my firebox. But the secret reason I absolutely love it is this is the greatest way I found to add supplemental smoke throughout my cook on longer cooks, things like ribs, brisket, 
or pulled pork is that I can add a piece of smoking wood before my cook starts and I can slide them into my kick ash can using a high heat glove and they will combust over time and add supplemental smoke to whatever it is that I'm cooking. Kick ash also makes more than I'm able to fit in today including a basket divider as well as a great hook which can be a great way of storing something like your cast iron half moon or your stainless steel half moon grid particularly if you are using the side shelves and you don't want to drop a hot grid directly on them uh, that can be a great way to get the heat out of a hot and heavy half moon accessory. Next up this one might surprise you particularly as I have an aversion to electronic grills. I don't like uh, grills that control themselves for a couple reasons. The same reason I don't like a car with maybe lane keeping assist and it's not quite getting it right and you find yourself fighting with the wheel to not die or veer off the shoulder. Sometimes that's been my experience with smart grills that they're just not intuitively doing what I want them to do. And I don't like fussing with electronics where the power goes out in the middle of the night or a rainstorm comes in and I have to worry about potentially damaging electronic components. And even though some of that rain sensitivity might be true with my next product recommendation, it has surprised and delighted me in a couple ways over the past year, which is why I'm including it in this list, which is is my Fireboard Smart Drive Controller. The Fireboard is a great way of updating an analog grill and turning it into a smart connected grill and it can completely be removed and go back to 100% manual with no wires, motherboards or controllers or anything like that that can get damaged over time. And if it ever does need to be replaced either by warranty or a newer model comes out in the future, I can easily upgrade it and retrofit it to my completely manual Komodo Joe, which I love. And so that of course is none other than my Fireboard uh, Drive Controller. I put this controller against the best of the best a year ago, including the Smobot, which is a smart regulator cap, it doesn't use a fan controller, instead, it it uses a servo to adjust the vent position and manually control temperatures, but it struggled at the things that I was most interested in, which was one, cold smoking, as well as the hot hold brisket. If you have an oven that is capable or could be adjusted to hold your brisket at a low enough temperature overnight, this absolutely is not something you need the fireboard drive to do, save for perhaps making the entire house smell like brisket, which I've come to learn, not everybody appreciates as much as me. Dad, Teddy smells like brisket. The dog smells like brisket. Joking aside, the Fireboard did a great job not only at cold smoking low temperatures, but being able to hold my Komodo Joe Big Joe at a low enough temperature. I could actually save and rest my brisket inside. And that's before I get to the programming benefit that Fireboard can be programmed to go from a low and slow smoke up to a hot and fast smoke for a certain range. And once you start reaching a near probe tenderness, it can start bumping down the temperature automatically without your input and turn your Komodo into a hot holding oven. I have not found any temperature controller that does as well in a Komodo Joe uh, application as the Fireboard Drive. And since the year that I've tested it, the Fireboard Spark has come out, which is a smart meat thermometer, which completely integrates into the Fireboard uh, Drive ecosystem. And I've just received the Fireboard Pulse, which is an all new wireless meat thermometer. I am still waiting for my shipment of the RFX Smart Probe. So if you've been tracking along and waiting for my updated wireless probe battle, make sure you've got the notification bell turned on as I hope to be able to share that in a couple weeks time once I've received and finished my testing, including on the all new RFX thermometer. But the Fireboard ecosystem has gotten even stronger than when I left it a year ago. So I'll be sure to put the details down to the Fireboard drive if you've got an analog Komodo and you would like the occasional digital experience where you can turn the keys over to the algorithm and let it work its magic. And last but not least, if you don't want to turn the keys over to the algorithm and you want to do things 100% manual, I'll give a short plug to my own digital guide. So I have a digital guide, all vent settings, including the smokeware, daisy wheel, as well as the control tower top, my double indirect setup. I've tried a whole bunch of different variations and landed on some of the best methods on all Komodo Joe models, as well as my clean smoke guides. All of this information I've shared for free across 400 videos, but I've taken the time to compile all the latest and greatest into a simple and easy to navigate PDF, or you can save 20% in buying them in a bundle together. It's a great way to support the channel as I'm able to invest that back into making and sharing great content like this. So now that we've covered all the bespoke Komodo Joe accessories, let's go into some of the universal accessories that work great in Komodo Joes, but they can also be used in any other smoker. 
Okay, next up is our group of accessories that are some of my favorite accessories that are not uh, Kamado brand specific. I'm gonna get started with a pellet tube smoker. Now this is not something that you want to use inside of any Kamado when you're actively cooking because the smoke coming off of this will be competing for limited oxygen available with our bottom vent and our top vent barely open. But what this absolutely does a great job is as a cold smoker. So whether we're cold smoking normal things like cheese, bourbon, or even ice that you can uh, have as smoked ice cubes for adding into your favorite cocktail. Well, I've been using this more recently is for cold smoking my big cuts of meats for things like pork shoulders or brisket. By going for about 60 to 90 minutes or maximum two hours of a cold smoke, before transitioning to a hot smoke has made a world of difference in the smoke profile that I'm able to get on my Kamado smokes. Bari barbecue cold smokes on their offset before going to a hot smoke. And the best way that I've been able to recreate that on a Kamado style grill is using something like a pellet tube smoker. Next up, I'm gonna go with a meat thermometer. And you see me use my Chef's Temp X10 all the time on the channel. And I love it for a couple reasons. One is magnetic, so I can just stick it to my offset and have it handy and nearby. It's also got a large, easy to read display, which is digital uh, down to the desk small point, which I can do in my other probes, but I have to open it up with a screwdriver and adjust something like my Thermoworks uh, in order to do that. And one of my favorite features is this hold button. So when I'm reaching in the back of my offset or a larger grill, and I don't want to have my hand over the fire, I can hit hold and it'll keep the uh, temperature exactly what it's at, which I've done right now, which is a very nice and chilly 59 degrees outside. Maybe why I'm losing my voice. But if this is already not in your arsenal, it is a great addition, either if you're buying for yourself or for a loved one, the Chef's Temp X10. Next on the list is a meat injector. So you can get a great deal on these. Uh, and I should mention, these are not uh, sponsored shout outs. I, I bought this, but this is my Spitjack meat injector. Uh, I had a less expensive injector. It worked great right up until the point where my probe uh, snapped. And so I found some of the Amazon specials, the probes are prone to bending and breaking. And that is not an issue on the construction of my Spitjack. I've been using it flawlessly now for a year. And if you get the upgraded kit like I opted for when I was ordering mine, you can choose different nozzles like this perforated uh, needle, which I use for things like injecting compound butter into my turkeys or chickens. And this disperses it all throughout the breast or whatever it is that I'm injecting. It does a really nice job. Costs a little bit more than some of the other options, but I think if you want to buy it once and be done, the Spitjack has been an amazing meat injector. Next up is the all new Meter Pro Duo, which in many ways is like a miniature version of the block. We still have USB-C charging, Wi-Fi, but if you're not going to use four probes, why overpay for four probes since the Meter Pro Duo gives you a lot of the functionality, including Wi-Fi, which I think is an absolute must in a convenient two probe package. Updated for this year in the new probes is a five sensor internal uh, readout along with the six sensor for the ambient. So this is gonna let us know what's going on with anything that we're cooking and keep track of that in the meter app. I mentioned I'll be working on an updated wireless smart probe battle later in the year when I receive a few of those other products and I'm waiting to finish that test. So make sure you've got the notification bell turned on so you're alerted when it comes out. Oh, a staple of my gift guides ever since I started doing them is things. Things like my grill blazer and grill gun. And I recently did a test comparing the startup time of something like a large Kamado compared to a pellet grill and a gas grill. And the spoiler alert here, if you haven't seen that, is I was able to get the fastest startup times, zero to 500 degrees Fahrenheit on a Kamado style grill, even quicker than the gas grill by several minutes by using my grill blazer grill gun. So if you wanna get convenience for midweek cooks, even on the largest size Kamados, or if you're cooking over a solo stove or a fire pit or an offset smoker, or you've just got some pesky weeds growing in your driveway, these are all things that I've absolutely fallen in love with the versatility of my Grow Blazer Grow Gun. They make two different sizes. The Grow Blazer Grow Gun is what I would opt for if you have things like an offset or you're starting fire pits or the largest Kamados. If you're not in a huge hurry and looking for the absolute fastest time, but you want the option of things like sauteing or melting cheese on top of your sandwich or a creme brulee, I would definitely opt for the sous vide gun. It can start all of my fires in slightly 
more time, but it has a regulator on the front that helps reduce our flame from 440,000 uh, BTU or something like that down to about 200,000 and a little bit more manageable flame uh, for those finer touches like creme blaze or uh, melting some cheese on top of your beef on wax sandwiches is one that I did this summer when we were camping. Uh, and so if you could only pick one, I would answer the question of how you plan to use it. If you're gonna be doing fire pits and big things, go for the grill gun. If you're gonna do a little bit of everything and you don't mind waiting one extra minute to get your grill up to temperature, the sous vide gun is plenty powerful enough. Speaking of dealing with fires, you're gonna want something like these high heat gloves. I've gone through several pairs. I have some JH safety ones, which I've got on Amazon, but I noticed uh, they've gone on and off. And since the first time I ever did a gift guide video, the price has more than doubled and they are no longer maybe uh, one of those cheap and affordable stocking stuffer gifts as they've escalated towards $50, depending on the day uh, Amazon prices have been fluctuating and you can get a great deal on something like these uh, meter high heat gloves. I've been using them interchangeably along with those JH safety ones and they are both holding up to uh, holding hot heat deflectors, cooking grids, or moving sticks in my offset burner. I've been able to hold active fires and not get burnt. And these are an absolute must for not just Kamados, but almost any style grill where you're working and interacting with hot food and hot components. Speaking of hot food, instead of using these for food, another great gift idea is pick up a multi-pack on Amazon of these cotton oven gloves, and then use something like these um, CSP safety uh, nitrile gloves as a wrapper around them. And this allows me to handle hot food and be 100% uh, food safe. And this is out of some of the options we've compared a little bit more stocking stuffer friendly uh, from a price point perspective. And last but not least in my gifts that can go on any style brand Kamado or grill for that matter is none other than the pepper cannon. If you or a loved one that you're shopping for likes to make their own rubs where you can dial up different flavor compounds. I've got some of my favorite rubs I put on my website for free. There's a link down below to check that out. Things like my ultimate SPG dry rub to things like my wing dust or bark builder. All of those I have uh, recipes, including uh, what settings I like to set my pepper cannon for to turn out amazing homemade rubs. The pepper cannon is not only versatile in terms of the size that I can adjust my granulars to, it is also 10 times faster than a regular pepper mill. And so while you can use any pepper mill to grind up the amount of pepper uh, by hand that I can do in my pepper cannon, the fact that this is 10 times quicker than normal becomes very quickly appreciated. Even when I'm adding small amounts like this single tablespoon of fresh cracked pepper, it is a welcome retreat to use something like my pepper cannon when making my own rubs or even just grinding up enough pepper to season a brisket for just a plain salt and pepper rub. The pepper cannon is sure to make anyone on the receiving end or if, even if you're buying it yourself, one happy customer. So as we started with, whether you're buying for yourself or buying for a loved one, I hope that this video has helped connect you with an accessory to to enrich and enhance your Kamado Joe grilling cooking experience. If somehow there is an accessory that I missed and it's one that I've got some experience with, let me know down in the comments and I can answer that either directly or if it's one that I've not yet tried, I'll be sure to try and add that to an upcoming video. That's it for today. I'm James with Smoke and Dad Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.